Hello and welcome to the next part of the XCAM tutorial video and today I want to show you the last brush function and also some possibilities to save user defined data. So here we go. Okay and as ever we need a project to start working with some objects. So I will load an empty project. And now I will show you the last brush function and that's the multi brush. And with this brush you can also create some objects. And you already know the single brush by selecting any temporary object and then press B. And then with the single brush you have always the control over each position of each object. But with the multi brush that's a little bit different. To start the multi brush, select any temporary object type from the library list and then press the key O. And now you can create objects within the brush area and you have only the control over the position of this brush area. And the objects within the area are created on randomized positions. So that's the main difference against the single brush. And if you now press the left mouse button, then within this area the objects will be created. And as longer you press the left mouse button, the more objects will be created. So. And of course you can move the mouse and press and hold down the left mouse button to fill up some, some areas. And if you now press the spacebar, then that's the same function as with the single brush. You can delete all objects from the current active brush session. And then, you know, all objects are deleted. And if you want to save all objects from a multi brush session, then simply press the key return. And that's the same functionality as with a single brush. All objects are then saved into your project. And remember, all these objects are also saved as an object group. So that means that's the focus to any object. Press G and now all objects are selected. And then you can move, copy, rotate, whatever, or maybe simply delete by pressing delete key. With the multi brush it's also possible to switch between different object types by simply pressing the arrow keys up and down. And that's a little bit different because you can't see at the moment which object is in use for the brush. But if you don't move the mouse and now press the arrow keys up and down, then there is a temporary object created in the center of the brush area and you can see which object type is selected. But as soon you move the mouse then this object is again deleted. The first available setting for the multi brush is to change the size of the brush area and that's the same function as for the selection or delete brush. So press O to start the brush, then press and hold down the left shift key and move the mouse wheel up or down. And at the top of the screen you can see the size of the brush. And the second available setting for the multi brush is to set the minimum distance between all objects within the active brush session. 
So start the brush by pressing O again. Then press and hold down the left control key and move on the mouse wheel up or down. And then you can see in the upper screen area which object distance is currently in use. So for this bush maybe a good value is 4 meters I think. And then if you now press and hold down the left mouse button then you can see there is no object overlapping anymore. Maybe a little bit but not in that way as before. So that means if you set the minimum distance to zero then you have no limit, no object limit within the brush area, you know. That's not a good idea. So in this way it's very easy to to paint some objects on the ground. There is also a special function available for the multi brush and that means you are able to delete any object from the current active brush session without to exit the function and that's really useful. So I will try to give you a small example and I will start with this object Oops, and press O to start the brush, change the settings a little bit, oh that's ok and then draw some objects here. And now if you make any mistake or you have any misplaced objects then simply press and hold down the left ALT key, press the left mouse button and move the brush and then you can delete these objects. And try it again. And if you again don't like these objects press the ALT key, delete them and try it again. So that's really, really useful. And now you can switch to another object type. So don't move the mouse. Press arrow keys up and down. Uh, maybe this object. Change the settings a little bit. Now draw these objects. And if you now make again a mistake, you can delete the objects. But the problem is, it can happen that you delete also some large stones, because these stones are also part of the current brush session. But there is a small solution for this problem. And I will show you this solution next. And I start in the same way as before. So select this object type, press O to start the brush, change the settings a little bit. Okay, and then create some objects here. And now I press return to save this brush session. And now switch to another object type. So for example I think we can try some trees. Press O, change the settings. And now create some trees. And if you now make a mistake with the trees, maybe in this way, some misplaced objects here. So that's easy to delete only the trees because the stones are not part of the current brush session. So press and hold down the left ALT key and press the left mouse button and then delete the trees and try it again. The next function I want to show you is the possibility to save user-defined data. 
you can save a user-defined copy distance and you can save a user-defined rotation axis and that's possible for each object type and I have searched for three different objects to show you this feature so we can start with a user-defined copy distance and that's for some objects really interesting and if you have a closer look to this wall element then you can see the bounding box is not really perfect so I will select this object and now that the copy direction and now as you can see there is always a gap between each object that's not really good but with the XCAM you have the possibility to change the copy distance a little bit and then you can save the user-defined data into an object file and then every time you select an object and no matter which object type so a temporary object from the library list or an already saved object the XCAM will search for user-defined data in the background and then this data is always immediately available okay now we can save some user-defined data for this object type so double left click to select and now you have to press this little button here on the right side CD that means copy distance hit the button and then you will see these dialog elements and the first thing you have to do here is press the load button and then you will see this dialog element and here you can find some sliders to change the copy distance on the x-axis, on the y-axis, z-axis but also to change the rotation axis and if you have a closer look to the object now then you can see the triangle here as part of the bounding box and you know this triangle looks always to the north and then you know which axis you have to change so in this example we want to change the x-axis and if you now move the x-axis slider then you can see in the 3d view that there is in addition a white bounding box and that white bounding box shows you the current user value for the x-axis so maybe we need this size but there is a little help function so that you have a better control and you already know the function so press Q to set the copy direction and if you set the copy direction to this side and now move the slider and then you can see not only the bounding box, the white bounding box is changed but also the distance between the two objects the selected one and the temporary object and then it's easy to set the right distance so you can also use these little uh, buttons here on the left and on the right side of the slider click to set smaller values and then release the Q key and press the save button and you know bounding box values are saved and that means every time you use this object you will use uh, user defined copy distance that's cool. Now press the CD button again to close the dialog elements and then you can start to copy some objects and then you will see there is no gap anymore between the objects and if we have a closer look to the object library lists then we can find some blue marked list entries as here in the middle list and that means for each of them 
any user-defined data was saved. So that's the reason for all these blue marked list entries. And if you want to save a user-defined rotation axis, then you have to press the CD button again. Then press the load button again to see all the sliders here. And then use this slider, X rotor, to change the position of the rotation axis. And now we zoom in a little bit. And if you now move the slider for the rotation axis, then you can see a wide vertical line, and that that line shows you the current position of the new rotation axis. And in this example, I think the best position for the rotation axis is the center of the pole. Then save the changes, and then press the ZD button again to close these dialog elements. There is one important thing you have to know about the user-defined rotation axis, and that means this function is only available for stepwise rotation and for the 45 degrees rotation. If you use a stepless rotation, then the default rotation axis is used. You can always switch between the original data and the user-defined data. So, for example, if you don't want to use the user-defined copy distance, then you can press this button, the button below the CD button. And that means this button is a switch to turn the function on or off. And if the function is on, then the XCAM is automatically searching for the right uh, object data. And now we can start a little comparison. So first I will switch the user-defined data off, then select the object and start to copy some objects. That's the result without the user-defined data. Now I turn the user-defined data on, select this object, and start with the copy action. And now that's the result with the user-defined data. So you are ready.